Welcome back to another video and today we're going to give our puzzle some smoother rotations and also we're going to be using exactly the same code so this is going to become our master to create another puzzle with different axes for the rotations. So let's go ahead let's get started. So let's dive into our puzzle and let's give this whole thing some actual smooth motions. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the delta seconds to calculate time so that we know how far into the rotation we are and how much of a rotation we need to apply. Now, if you go to the class defaults, uh, I actually have this changed. By default, the start with tick enabled should be set to true. So that's basically the default setting. But I don't want my tick to be running constantly. I only want it to be running when I actually do need it. So by default, so go to the class defaults and just simply disable this so that it is false by default. Now let's set up a some kind of a timer type of a thing event. So we're going to need two variables for this. First, we're going to need the rotation time. So how long this rotation actually the animation is going to happen for. And we're going to use float because delta seconds are a float value. And then also we need the current time. So how far into the animation we already are. So the rotation time set up to whatever you like. I will say that I want my bridge to, on every key press to rotate for like two seconds until it reaches its uh, end point of the rotation. And yeah, that's gonna be mine. So let's set up the timer. So for that, we're gonna need our event tick. Like so, we're gonna set up a very basic timer. So our task is to update the current time. And what we want to do is we want to grab the delta seconds and do a plus. And we want to add the current time that we have right now, plus the delta seconds that have passed. And that's going to be our new current time. So sim as simple as that. That's going to be our timer. Now, one more thing that we want to do is I'm going to bring my rotate stuff from the key press to the event tick. So we're going to be doing this like so instead. And what we then need to do is we actually need to enable the tick because we disabled it by default. So whenever we're going to click a button, we're going to set that it's moving. We're going to know which rotation we are using. So basically which key we pressed. And then we want to set actor tick enabled to be true like so. So then this is going to enable the tick. It's going to start running and it's going to constantly try and rotate our object. Now with this we have a couple of issues. So first and foremost, uh, well we don't have any timed anything so it's still going to snap instantly to the rotation and then also every time when it's going to go through the cycle during the tick which is going to happen quite a lot quite fast. Well then it's going to go to the completion and it's going to say that it's no longer moving and it's going to be done. So first let's disconnect this thing. We're going to still keep this. And what we want to do instead of instantly running this, we actually from the completion, we want to do a condition. So we're going to do an if branch and only if that condition meets, uh, if, it, if the condition is true, only then we're going to stop the animation and move on with everything. So the condition for this is going to be that we need to check if our current time is bigger or equal than the rotation time. So whenever it's going to reach two seconds or more, it's going to stop like so because delta seconds are not uh, exact numbers. They're comma something a lot. So uh, we always need to check if it's bigger or equal because it could go a little bit above. Now, the next thing that we need to do is whenever we are done with the animation. So we have set up that it's no longer moving. We also want to make sure that we disable the tick. So we want to do set actor tick enabled. We want to set this back to false so that this thing would no longer run. And also we want to make sure that our current time has been reset back to zero so that on every new key press, the time starts with zero like so. Now, like I mentioned, the delta seconds are not going to be perfect. So they could go a little bit above. So what we want to do is whenever we are done with our smooth animation, we have reset all of our variables back to their default values. We also want to make sure that we snap our puzzle piece to the exact rotation that it needs to be at. And we are actually already doing this over here, but over here we're going to be doing this slightly over time. So what we want to do is we want to set the relative rotation once more down here. So we want to grab our component and we want to set relative rotation 
like so. Now a good place for this would be probably somewhere in between over here. We'll do the trick. Like so. Connect it up. Connect the rotation and some small bits of rerouting so that we can actually see where our routes are going so they don't overlap too much. Okay, so that's going to fix our puzzle once the puzzle has been rotated. Now we actually need to go ahead and give it the smooth rotation. So we can do that up here. So we're going to grab these last two nodes, bring them back. Let's disconnect the B route and let's split both of these pins. So we want to right click the B route, split it. And also the get node, we want to right click this and split it as well. Because we want to kind of divide the value. We don't want to give it the full rotation. We only want to give it a little piece of it. So we're going to grab our X axis and we're going to multiply this and connect it up. And then we're going to do the same thing for all three of our axes. So the Y axis and our Z axis as well, like so. Okay, that's good for this part. Now we need to do some more calculations to make sure we are giving it the proper amount. So we're going to do that very simply. We're going to grab our current time. So how far into the animation we are right now. And we're going to go ahead and divide this with the total time of the animation. So our rotation time. And this way it's going to give us a number between 0 and 1. And we're going to know how far into the animation we are currently. So we can give this to the multiply node like so. And at this point, I believe the rotations should happen very smoothly. So let's give it a tar try and let's see. Here we go. So two seconds for it to rotate. And everything seems to be the way it should be. Now let's test this out real quick. Let's say we want to do like 0.3 seconds instead. Like so. And as you can see, this is way, way faster now. Good. So obviously you can set any time you want for this and it's going to do the trick just fine. Now, so this was very quick and simple. So let me just show you. Let's bring this into like an actual, let's start, start making this into an actual framework because as of right now, this is only a single puzzle. But with this code, we could run uh, different types of puzzles. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename this to BP Puzzle Master first and foremost like so and then i'm gonna go ahead and actually get rid of these cubes and actually before i do that because this is going to break this code so let's do let's first create a child so let's right click on the bp puzzle master let's create child blueprint class and let's call this bp bridge let's open this one up so you will see that in the in the, in the visualizer, in the viewport, it's going to look exactly the same. In the graph, we're going to have nothing really. So what we want to actually do is we want to make sure that we get rid of all of this thing. We don't need any of it. All we need is just the regular begin play event. That's all that we need right now. And then we want to grab our BP puzzles begin play info. So all of this stuff, we could actually grab the event itself as well. And we want to go ahead and paste it inside of here, like so. Because all of since we since this is a child, we actually have all of the variables that we have in the master available in the child as well. So we could right click and do get is moving. So we could grab that variable and we can also set up its default values in the class defaults. In the class defaults, not in the class defaults should be. Oh, there it is at the very top. So let me. So here are the default values. So we can grab and apply those values over here as well. So what I'm going to do is we need to get rid of the cubes. And we can't do that because they are a parent piece. So we can't really do that. So instead, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove them in the master like so. So no more pieces. So you're going to see it gives me an error because it's trying to grab the values, but it can't. So we want to remove the begin play from the master because it's no longer needed in the master. We're applying all the puzzle piece data inside of the child blueprint. So once we compile this, we get an error because there's no cubes as well. So let's go ahead and let's set those up real quick. So we want to do cube. And what was it? It was, I believe, two in this axis. 
one in this, point one in this, maybe even bigger, doesn't matter. So we have cube one, we're gonna have duplicate for the cube two and for the cube three. So we're gonna bring one back here. So like 150 minus 150, there we go. We compile and save this, fixed some of the errors, not all of them though. Uh, the property associated cannot be found in the bridge. So we're just going to grab our cubes, drop on top of them, recompile. Doesn't seem to work. So I guess if we would refresh this. There we go. So file, refresh all nodes. Now we're good. This is only going to work if you named your cubes exactly the same way and if they're both static mesh components. If not, you're going to need to bring them back in and then get the relative relative rotation just like we did up there and then reconnect the pins like so okay so that's for this piece so let's just give it a try so we have the master in here we're gonna get rid of that instead we're gonna bring in the child let's hit play and there you go as you can see it works exactly the same way as it did before now if you want to have multiple puzzles like this in the same level and you want them to have a different speeds so basically you can duplicate it and then you need to change the speed of speed of the rotation so we could go into the puzzle master select our rotation time and make sure that this is set to instance editable and what this allows us to do is now inside of the level itself if we select the puzzle piece under the defaults, we can see the rotation time. So we could say this one is 0.3, this one is 2. And then if we hit play, walk up to this one, you can see this one is fast. This one is slower. Now, another thing that we could do is now I'm going to duplicate the BP bridge. So this is a child, so I'm going to just duplicate this. So we're going to duplicate and let's say we do BP, let's call this round. So I'm going to actually get rid of these for now from the game. Let's go inside of our BP round and let's change up the shapes of these things. So we have cubes right now. So instead of a cube, I want to use a cylinder instead. So I'm going to be using cylinders for all three of these pieces. Now, obviously, I will need to reshape these. So we're going to do one, 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 zero. So let's do something like this and let's also apply some kind of a material so that we can see some kind of a rotation happening actually so it visually occurs otherwise we're not gonna see anything doesn't matter really what materials we use okay so we have our pieces we have our pieces all ready to go and now i'm gonna move them on top of each other so we're gonna bring these back back and so three is going to be on the ground, two is going to be a little bit higher, and one is going to be even higher, like so. So we have these three pieces on top of each other. And in this case, I want them to rotate in different ways. I don't want them to rotate like this, like the bridge did, or uh, I believe bridge did like this. Instead, I want this to rotate like so. Right, so this is, if I rotate this, I can see on the right side, it is the Z axis. So instead of using the x-axis in the event graph, we can change the values. So we have the, oh, previously we used the y-axis. So I'm just gonna cut this, uh, change this from zero to 10 over here. So from 25 to zero and 25 over there. So we're just changing up the values, moving them from one axis to another. There we go, so I brought all of my from the Y to the Z axis, and now let's bring one of our round puzzles into the game. Let's hit play, walk up to this, and if we press the key, as you can see, these things are rotating, and every single one of them is rotating at different speeds and different angles, just like we set it up in the config, like so. So that's pretty much it for this video. So we have set this up now. The next thing is to probably set up that something actually happens when the puzzle has been completed. And we're going to do that in the next episode. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I see you in the next one.